But the key about monoclonals is what they're doing is they're drugs that are basically binding the surface of cells and interrupting, Just to recognize the, them. Well, interrupting yeah. the conversations that the immune cells are having with each other while they decide what to do. Right? But so. what, what's right now, how well is, is the function of T cells understood in mediating? Well, uh, we uh, all understand how they work, but we don't agree. <laughs> what does that mean? That, mean? that means that we all have ideas about how things work, and we're all sort of rectifying those ideas and figuring out which ones are, are working in certain settings. So in certain tumors, things are going awry in one way, and we can treat those with the immunotherapies we've made, but in other cases, there's really a different theme to how the immune system has gone awry. When you point out that there's 10 times as many bacterial cells so in the body, so the immune system somehow learns that it's, it's not self, but it's not something that, that they need to attack. Correct. Somehow cancer, a lot of times when you're young, if there's a cancer cell that, that arises yep. from a mutation, the immune system will, the immune system will see it sure. and recognize it. Sure. As you get older, do you become less, does the immune system age and become less effective at recognizing a cancer cell? It definitely ages. I think there's also aspects that cancer basically over time evolves to figure out the traps. To, to figure to out how it can... around so that it looks like self? Does yeah. it, it, and is it surface? Uh, I think it's, stuff on, I think it's the... less that it changes its surface than that it, that it changes the gene expression that it has right. so that it can look like something that you want to tolerate. Like it keeps coming back and, and again and, and again, and every time it gets shut down, it comes up with a new way to research. That's right, and, and as long as it can remain occult, you know, sort of quiet, right. until it figures that out, then ultimately as we age, it'll finally figure it out. Let's talk about, as you point out, uh, so much disease is either the immune system doesn't recognize cancer or it, it, it recognizes something like diabetes or Alzheimer's where attacking. it's attacking itself. What goes wrong with the immune system in autoimmune diseases? Why does it suddenly not understand that, it, that it's doing harm rather than good? Yeah, so I think at some point there are patterns in nature that are recognized and they're recognized inappropriately so that in autoimmunity, your, your uh, pancreas, for example, in, in diabetes, becomes something that looks like it should be destroyed. Maybe there's ideas that maybe that's viral. You might have a virus that shows up in your pancreas and then for a little while that turns on the cues that say, oh, this is an infected cell, attack it. But honestly, though, that's a big question. And you know, we, all, we know that, for example, fam in, in families, you can have genetic predisposition to auto autoimmunity. So there's some genetics to it, but there's also some environment. And we don't, these are, we don't know these. You think things. you can retrain the immune system? Yes. I mean, I think we are. I mean, we are. I mean, that's what that's what the current immunotherapies are doing for cancer, and in, in, you know, I think we'll be able to do that also in the settings of autoimmunities. But what we have to do first is understand these patterns. We have to understand all the different ways in which the immune system can basically function to either tolerate things or get rid of them. And then you, what you want to really do is figure out how it's not working in cancer and apply that mechanism to autoimmunity to turn it off, right? Because cancer is where the immune system is off. And vice versa, you want to find all these systems where it's going really well, figure out what that pattern really is all about and apply it back to cancer, for example. Whenever you're, and I made the point that you got T cells, you got B cells, you got all these other, the, you know, substances that are generated by, by both of those. Whenever you do something over here, specifically trying to help here, don't you worry yes. that yeah. I yes. mean, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's such a complex system with so many moving parts yep. that if you could, suddenly the side effect is that it attacks something else and you die from the stupid immunotherapy instead yep. of dying from the disease itself. Yeah, we, we call that collateral damage. And it's essentially like when you see uh, chemotherapies, the side effects are, you know, liver toxicity because the drugs there are very toxic to other sites in your body. If you're tweaking the immune system, you have the danger of, of, of throwing the immune system into hyperactivity. Right. And, and you see that. So some portion of the people that get cancer immunotherapy will end up with diabetes. Very small portion. That's treatable. And I think you and I would take the, the, the point of like you get to live and you might have to take insulin. That's a pretty good trade-off. You remember, you were probably young, but do you remember the battle against sepsis and all the biotech companies thought, we're going to be able to do this. There yeah. was Synergen and there was yeah. Senecor. They all had a way that they were going to do it. Yeah. Have we cured, have we figured out how, how to save someone who gets sepsis or a septicemia? Because Hugh Hefner just no. died. Now, I heard yeah, he yeah. had, yeah. I heard that was sepsis. Yeah. Again. Have yeah. we figured out how to cure that? No, Why? That, that's, yeah. that's my point. With the yeah. cytokines and this cascade of all these Im immune Something. We still yeah. don't even know how to do that. Well, sepsis is a particularly weird one because it's this massive collapse. All of a sudden, your body just goes absolutely nuts. Every immune cell starts making tons of cytokines. You know, you, you basically die from shock. 
You know, you all, die this from stuff, uh, yeah, yeah, all this shock. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. people know that term, right. septic shock. And, yeah. and okay, so we've been working on it for 25 years. Yeah. Biotech littered with the bankrupt right. companies that haven't been able to, to figure that out. I mean, immunotherapy is different. We we actually are making progress into that area. Sepsis, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. That's a that's a that's a. But it doesn't where... seem that complicated. It's just your blood has an infection. Kill the infectious agent without yeah, you know without I, killing. I think, sepsis is some sort of side effect of evolution. At some point, sepsis is one of these things where everything just is trying to do the right thing. But everybody's trying to do the right thing at the same time, and it, and it blows up. It blows us up, and, it, and you know, it's not. It's obviously not something. Do you that have a public before. company that you think is really exciting? That that, uh, or a couple of them that are, are are really close to something that would be commercially successful? I mean, I obviously like the I like the small ones. I like the small pre-public ones because they're yeah. doing things that in immunotherapy are like the T-bone. You know, everybody else is doing this, trying to do copycats of what we've done, accelerating. But I think the small. Have you started a company yet? I have. I have. I have. It's called Pioneer. And uh, it's doing really well. They're doing that. They're really T-boning cancer from other angles. There's so much going on in terms of this conversation that all the things we did to release the brakes on T-cells, there's really only so fast T-cells can go, right? But if they start to hit other barriers, you want to push those out of the way. But you've had some amazing success with uh, cases that looked like nobody else could help along yeah. the way. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Max, thank you. We, we, uh, we'll yeah. see you next time you're in town. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. Talk some more. We'll be pleasure. Here. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.